what's up everybody welcome to today's video real quick my camera broke my canon r10 that i've been using for the past two years my prized possession for vlogging is broken so i'm gonna be using my backup camera which is a canon v10 until i can get that fixed somehow this it's all right but it's a very very wide angle and i have to film everything with this which kind of sucks and anyway so a couple months ago i got invited to join an exhibition match for the nhrl the robotics combat Le combat robot league the homie henchman sam hit me up and he's like hey you want to come check out this robot fighting stuff i'll help you build a robot and you can fight and i did and it was sick check this out it's from team bot grinder this is your villain d bot piloted by drone pilot bot grinder just put a chainsaw on it why don't you now this is an atypical way to control a robot wow oh, we're starting we are fully up right to off speed. the bat pause working to bat bat the chainsaw out of the way oh my god and d shot is on fire after i got home i was absolutely obsessed with fighting robots i it was just like when i found fpv i youtubed everything i watched every freaking video i went to every single forum every discord i could find i i got kind of obsessed with this well it turns out <laughs> why did i do that why did i do that well it turns out some of the leagues have a one pound plastic ant category or plant and this is basically 3d printed robots up to one pound using plastic materials they list but mainly 3D printed stuff. The weapon, the chassis, everything has to be plastic. Here, look at some of these clips I stole off the internet of plants fighting. Well, this is fantastic news. I own a 3D printer, so I can basically print out whatever I want and build my entire combat robot with my 3D printer. What isn't fantastic is I have no idea how to use any sort of computer-aided drafting program at all. I don't know how to use Fusion. I know how to use Tinkercad, and that's it. And Tinkercad is definitely not gonna build me an actual competitive robot, but the joke's on them. I don't need to build a competitive robot. I just wanna have a good time. So off to Tinkercad I went. I didn't really know how to start doing this at all, so I went to Thingiverse and I downloaded some files for a couple other, like one pound plastic ant combat robots and I went to Tinkercad and I sort of just made a little box. I sort of just made a little box around one of those designs just to get like the shape and the size down. Now these robots in this class can only weigh up to one pound and I have no idea how much my components are going to weigh nor how much PLA is going to weigh after it's all said and done. I had maybe like five little iterations of this design until I settled on this one. The others either they weighed way too much or they just like looked whack and obviously weren't going to work. Not that this one's a masterpiece or anything but it's thick in all the right places and it has a weapon on the front that's going to spin super fast. So here let me introduce you all to Tinker Chaos. This, this is my combat robot that I made named so because it was made in Tinkercad and the entire process of building it was pretty chaotic. It's a one pound vertical spinner with foam wheels and I don't know how much it weighs. I don't know if it's gonna work. This is definitely not gonna work. I think all said and done it took me about a month messing around on Tinkercad to get this working. Since you can't go back in Tinkercad like you can in Fusion or whatever, every time I made like a different little design change I would save a copy of that. So I ended up having, I don't know, I had a lot, I had an absolute lot of different copies of the stupid robot chassis. And after a while there I kept forgetting which one was the new one because like you know I'd be like three in the morning and I have an idea so I'd change something and then I'd be like oh crap I don't remember what I did which one is the correct one so I kind of just picked one that looked right and went with that I'll say I was honestly surprised how easily everything went together after that I printed out the frames all the holes actually fit with the electronics that I made for them the weapon mount actually lined up with the holes that I was very very shocked so I put everything together and then I programmed the drive now the way I'm doing this is I'm using the right stick to go up down left and right to drive the robot and then the left stick is going to be used for the weapon only you know so I can increase the, it's just an FPV motor it's a freaking drone motor for my weapon motor so I'm going to use the right stick to make that go faster and slower for me it's definitely not the best method of driving since I'm a little squirrely using one stick but it it works it works so I'm not touching it I'm not changing I'm not trying anything else it drives I'm not changing anything speaking of the actual weapon on here the little blade I didn't design that at all I have no idea how to do that so I went on Tinkercad and I looked at a couple and printed them out and this one happened to press fit onto my motor so this is the one that I'm using the driving test went pretty well though like I said it's a little squirrely but I was able to drive it around and it pretty much went where I wanted it to go but now it's time for the actual weapon test I spun it up and it spun and it like it did weapon things but I've never actually like tried to hit anything with it I didn't want to do this because I didn't want it to break. I was like, oh, it looks like it's working. It looks so good. I don't want to go test it and have it all fall apart in testing. But, you know, this is going to be in a, in a box with a bunch of robots that are out to kill me. So I'm going to have to test it thoroughly. And I thought the first thing that I was going to hit was just going to, like, shake it and destroy the, the weapon mount and everything. But it did pretty well. So as long as my opponents are just, like, standing still and let me creep up behind them very slowly and get in a good position and then slowly whittle them away with my weapon, I'm going to kill it. But these fools are going to be driving all around trying to rip me to shreds 
heads or disable me and stop me from driving. I've seen photos of some of the bots that are entering this competition and they are killing machines for sure, bro. They are designed to destroy and this, they're probably on like their fifth revision, you know what I mean? These people have been doing this for a minute. I really don't think I have much of a chance against these, but again, I just want to experience this, you know what I mean? I just want to try this out and see what it's like and making my little shit box and Tinkercad was the easiest way to do this. You know, worst comes to worst, I'm gonna hang out with some homies, I'm gonna fight some little plastic robots, I'm gonna check out a new hobby. About a week before the event, all that positivity went right out of the window. I kept going back and forth between like, oh, this robot is such a piece of crap. Like, what, why am I even wasting people's time? And then like, nah, screw that. This is going to be fun. You know, everybody's got to start somewhere. But in the end of that conversation inside my head, I just got really high. And then I was like, you know what? Here's my trick for everything. Here's my trick for anything. Just be like, you know, uh, the average lifespan is like 60, 70 years. And in a cosmic sense, that's a blink of time. So who gives a shit? Suck it up. Go do something. Have some fun. You know what I'm saying? Don't worry about it. Break into that band. Who gives a shit? Well, the police give a shit, but besides that, who gives a shit? A couple days before the event, I panicked and I redesigned the rear of my robot. I just moved the wheels further back. My thinking was in my testing, if I was upside down, I couldn't move. And when you're upside down, it's like wrestling, right? They count you down to 10. If they do a full 10 count, you lose the match. And if I get flipped over, which there are flipper bots, then I'm... I lose right away. So I shifted the wheels more to the rear so that way when I'm upside down, I won't be able to spin up my weapon, but at least I'll be able to drive around and I won't get counted out. I also printed the chassis in purple, but I left the top plates yellow, so give my guy a little bit of fashion, you know what I'm saying? I woke up at 6 a.m., no alarm, ready to go. I was so excited for this day. My homegirl Randy also made a robot and we're going the same way, so we decided to just ride together in my van. And two hours later, we arrived in Severn, Maryland for the Macro Combat Robot, wait, what is it? The Macro Combat Robot League Ides of July event. We went through check-in, which is where you get like your little badges and then you weigh your robot to make sure that you're under the pound limit. They check everything out and they do a fail-safe check, which means you put your robot into the box, you spin up your weapon, and you drive in little circles, and while you're doing that, you turn off your radio to make sure your failsafe is working, you know, just like an FEV drone. Now, I've said a few times in this video, I know this my little robot isn't that competitive, and I'm just here to have fun, but some of these were gnarly. Seeing these in person, I was just like, these are, there's so much craftsmanship in these. These are such high quality prints, high quality weapons and designs and everything. I have a little shit box with a stolen blade on the front of it. What the hell am I thinking? After check-in and everything, we had about an hour while brackets were being made before the first fights were announced. The homie Captain Cannoli showed up to show some moral support, fly his whoops around, and so did Sam from the NHRL, the person I was talking about that got me into this whole mess. He showed up with his one pound full combat robot that has his crazy titanium, yeah, you'll see it in a bit. We did our little driver safety meeting and the brackets started popping up online, which is this cool little system that they have. It works in real time, so you can just like sit there and chill and look at the brackets and whoever's fighting right now is highlighted so you can see, you know, if you're coming up, you better go get ready. And the way these brackets work is you have like your winner's bracket, so if you win, you continue on. If you lose, you get dumped down to the loser's bracket and if you lose that fight in the loser's bracket, then you just lose and go home or whatever. So I have to win at least one of my fights to continue going forward. And this was going to be against some pretty gnarly robots. So I, I had to develop some strategy that wasn't just like brute strength. Side of my strategy would be just staying alive. Some of these robots have giant weapons, right? And if they miss you, they hit the wall and they kind of bounce around. I've been watching combat robot videos for months now and I've seen this a lot. So I think my strategy for my first fight was if I can't get up in there and kill my opponent, just to let him take himself out. You know, let him try to ram me, hit the wall, have his weapon hit the wall and break itself apart like that while I'm just kind of dancing around in the background. But then the brackets came out and I saw that my opponent was this bot called Crippling National Debt, who has this sort of like, the spinner isn't horizontal or vertical, it's kind of at an angle like this. And he has a big scoopy wedge thing in the front, so that weapon can't make contact with the wall. Only me, it's gonna scoop me up into that. So that strategy I just made up, it's fucked. I was gonna have to fight, man, that's it. I'm just gonna have to suck it up, I'm gonna have to fight, I'm gonna have to spin my weapon up to full speed as soon as the match starts and just go right at him, weapon to weapon, and hope I can do enough damage to both of us to take his weapon out, but still allow me to drive around and take that win. You're also judged on, um, I forget the exact criteria, there's like damage and control. You know, you can do pins. So, you know, if I can knock his weapon off and if I can get my little square bot into him and pin him against the wall a few times, then I might be able to get the judge's win through the pins. 
But as soon as the fight started, I forgot all about that strategy and started panicking. I immediately turned around and presented the weakest part of my bot directly to crippling national debt. There's a four millimeter back wall on here that has no protection. Thankfully, it didn't do too much damage. You couldn't really connect with it. But as soon as I flipped around, he sheared my forks right off that are supposed to feed him up into my blade. I actually got a couple hits on him, which he just gave right back. We circled each other for a little bit, looking for openings. Then we made head to head contact and somehow, maybe because my forks got knocked off, my blade managed to actually catch his wedge and flip him over. Holy shit, it was at an angle that he couldn't recover from. I think I just won my first ever combat robot fight. The hit totally destroyed the weapon that I stole from Thingiever, so I had no way to do any more damage, but it didn't matter. I flipped him over and he cannot attack me. So now I have to make a decision. Do I be a good sport and try to flip him back over? Or do I just wait for the countdown and take the win? I decided to try and flip him back over, but I can't control this fucking robot. So I kept missing and I tried, right? But I can't believe it, y'all. I just won my very first combat robot. Oh, what the fuck? He got back up. Somehow he righted himself off camera and spun his weapon back up. So I'm like, oh shit, okay. I need to get behind this fool and pin him and run the clock out so I don't get murdered. He knocked off some more pieces of me and then the rest of my weapon, but then the killing blow came. It was time for him to flip me over. No problem, right? I prepared for this. I shifted my wheels back and I drove all over my living room, no problem. No, bro, no, I did not. This day was not working. I was upside down, but my wheels were not making contact with the ground. This was not my living room floor. I was stuck. He got me there. There was no way I was going to recover, and the match was almost over, so I just took the countdown and lost the match. I gave the driver one of these little loser coins that you're supposed to give out. Like, you make these little coins, and if you lose a match, you give the, the winner a coin so they can collect them at the end of the day and, like, look at all the people that they beat or whatever. After the match, the uh, crippling national debt's dad, your pilot driver, that will go dad. Crippling National Dead's dad was like, yo, look at this. You actually did some damage. So I took this photo. I was like, oh shit. All right. So the weapon that I stole off Tinkercad actually can do some damage. Just it explodes. <laughs> it explodes when you hit anything with it. So now I'm in the loser's bracket, whatever. I repaired my bot. I put a new weapon blade on there. I totally forgot to put my forks back on, but whatever. And then I heard some tiny whoops flying off in the distance. I also brought my whoop stuff. So I grabbed it and then uh, did a little bit of whooping with Henchman Sam. After we got done whooping, my next opponent was announced. Ironically named for me, Redemption. It was a vertical spinner that, oh my god, this thing looks so serious. It's got like freaking polyurethane skateboard ass looking wheels on it, like some really crazy weapons on there, like a dual spinner thing. This thing's gonna kill me. I tried to think of a strategy for this fight, but ultimately I settled on, just don't let my opponent's robot get too damaged beating mine up. This guy is obviously going to win, right? And he's going to be going on to several more matches. So I don't want him to like catastrophically break anything on his just because my dumb ass decided to stay in the race. And I executed my strategy flawlessly because he just came at me right off the bat at 100 miles an hour and destroyed me. Eventually, he knocked me over on my back and I wasn't able to move. And then I asked the rep if I should tap out. I, tap out I just don't want him to break his robot on mine. <laughs> Alright, I'll tap out. So I did. But I was talking to Redemption's dad. We're going dad, right? After the match, and he was like, man, I'm glad that went by quick because my drive system gets really hot the longer I am in there. So I was like, oh man, like I should have just done my original strategy, which was just to avoid the robots, let him drive around, catch on fire, then I'd win by default. But for real though, both matches were super, super fun. I had like the best time doing this. I had so much fun playing with my little robot, meeting everybody at the event, seeing how all that stuff goes, and just seeing all the like incredible builds that people have. I, I am 100% redesigning my bot and going back. But but the homie Sam I was talking about actually has this one pound full combat robot with a crazy titanium metal plate that I was talking about. And he asked his dude to battle him. So as soon as they got in the cage, the other robot hit Sam's titanium square and check it out. It just started bouncing around like a fucking crazy frisbee. Oh! <laughs> so 
So that was that. That was my very first building my own robot and going to fight it experience. I had no idea what I was doing. My robot was super weak, but I had the best time. I realized too, like I think most of the fun in this is the design and the build. Kind of like drones for me. Like I really like flying them, but designing them and building them is also pretty sick. I am I am going to start learning Fusion after this because I know Tinkercad is absolutely not going to cut it and I'm going to use something like a little more forgiving. But thank you very much to the Maryland Area Combat Robotics Organization for hosting such an amazing event for letting everybody come out there and do their thing. Everybody there I talked to was super cool. I, I know I was coming out there with like this really shitty design. I don't know anybody there. I, I don't look like anybody there, but y'all were so cool. Everybody there was so nice and welcoming, man. I, I had the best time. And really, thank you very, very much to the whole macro staff, everybody that was there, everything. And for those of you regular viewers of my channel, I know this isn't my typical content. It's usually FPV stuff, but uh, these robots are pretty fun. I'm going to do it some more. So if you absolutely hate this content, please let me know in the comments and I won't show too much of it. But if you like it, also let me know and I'll make more videos. It's up to you, really. I'm going to do it regardless. You know, if, if you want to see it, it's up to you. And if you do want to see the time that I put a chainsaw on a robot with the help of Sam and tried to fight that, you can watch this video right here. If you do enjoy my content, you can help keep it going by joining the Patreon. I don't do ads in front of my videos. I don't do sponsored content or take money from nobody. If I don't make good videos, then I don't make Patreon money. So, fuck. But more importantly, I promise next time will be FPV. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching today's video. I'll see you next time. Bye.